So I'll just give a little recap. We are doing spiritual warfare series. We started with uh, Eph Ephesians chapter 6, uh, 10 to 18, where it talks about we need to put on all the armors of God. And we need to pray always. Uh, we need to always pray, actually. And uh, why you need to do that? As we believe in Jesus Christ, we are part of the kingdom of God. And part of the kingdo kingdom of God is always, uh, uh, Satan is always against the kingdom of God people. And he always try to fight against us. So you, if you think that, oh, I do not want to know that, uh, that will be your problem because if you do not know, you will be a casualty actually. And then we, next day we uh, discussed about the weapons uh, of the battleground. There are armors and uh, uh, we understood that there are weapons of defense and weapons of attack actually. So <coughs> then we shared about, we heard about belt of truth. We need to have truth. Uh, the center part of our life it cannot happen that we believe in God but then we are lying in our personal life to uh, to hold on to something to have some uh, benefits or do some things which are not according to the Lord so we need to have truth in our life actually truth should be center part of our life then uh, we should have we should put on the breastplate of righteousness which will protect our heart from all the dirts of the enemy the, the, the arrows of the enemy enemy will always try to put arrows towards us by, by hurting us by uh, like bad words bad understandings even in our imaginations there can be wrong things which will try to hurt us but if you put on the breastplate of righteousness that will protect your heart and the next day we shared about shoe preparation for the gospel shoe is actually offensive where uh, like we, when you put on shoes you uh, like you are going to the uh, uh, kingdom of darkness and uh, sharing them gospel and bringing them back actually so this is offensive weapon and we need to all put on this it is not that oh some people should go and share it uh, we uh, we will have we, we will not do that we are not called to do that it's not like that we all are called to share gospel so uh, that oh god oh god wants from us then there is a shield of faith last week we shared about that there are two kinds of shield. One is small one, other is big one. We need to have the big one so that not only it will protect us, but also protect others from our family, from our faith group, from our uh, no. No, known other believers actually. So our faith need to be strong. Someone is joining. One minute. Yeah, John. Yeah, actually we already started. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, we already started actually. We'll continue with that, John. Okay, uh, then we shared about, uh, yeah, then next day we shared about helmet of salvation, which we need to put on our head actually, that will protect our head from all the attacks of the enemy, basically in our thoughts. And, uh, and that actually then Hebrew, we find that there's a hope in our mind, that hope is on Jesus Christ, not on anything else, but hope is on Jesus Christ, his finished work, his words, and what he's going to do. All these things three things our hope is standing actually what he already did on his word which is there uh, which is eternal and also what he is going to do he is going to come back actually and he's going to take us and on that line i shared about uh, that he is the he's the forerunner he went ahead of us and he went to the inner sanctuary to uh, uh, like he purchased the uh, salvation for us like he, uh, he he took the blood in the inner sanctuary so that he can set us free and so we can trust him always because he is the high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, sitting with the Father God. He is there actually for on our behalf. So we should have always hope on him actually, and that hope will never disappoint us. That is a that is not only hope; that is a living hope. We we discuss actually. Right. Um, today we are going to share about sword of the spirit. Sword of the spirit. Mm. The sword of the spirit, uh, can you please uh, mute your mics, all of you? Yeah. So uh, the interesting thing is uh, the sword of the spirit, which is word of God. Ephesians chapter 6, 17 says that take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Word of God is a sword actually that cuts actually. And uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, 12 says that the, so the word of God is a living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Is a living, powerful, sharper than two-edged sword. Uh, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, I was uh, like, just after our marriage, once I was coming back from uh, my duty, actually. That day, whole night I was on duty. And morning, I think 7 o'clock, I 
uh, I was off. I, I got off actually. Next day was Sunday actually. So I was coming back to my house actually. And on, on the way, there is, a shop, there is a market actually. And there I found some fish. And uh, I was trying to buy some fish and I found some li fish live actually. So I was thinking how to take it actually. And I was not having proper uh, bags and all how to take those uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, vegetables and all. But then that man, he gave an idea actually. <laughs> he said that I'll put it in a plastic bag and you put it in on your backpack. So I was having a backpack, so I said, okay, I agreed. So he put that live fish into that plastic bag, and I put it in the, my backpack, and I, I, I was driving. And I, when I was driving, I was driving bike, actually. And when, when I was driving bike, I could sense that fish is moving inside the bag, like inside the plastic only, but it was moving, and I could sense that. So uh, to make you understand that, that the, that the Word of God is living and it moves, when I came to the Lord, uh, initially when I heard the gospel, and I could not sleep three nights. And I was so fearful because I, was, I heard from the scripture, it says that he knows everything of my life. And I have to stand before him one day for judgment. And uh, that is horrible because my, I was thinking that I, oh, I am a living a good life. But when I found Jesus from the scripture, uh, it is as if I can see a, a powerful... Uh, uh, like God, actually, his eyes can see, the, sense the light, and the light exposed the darkness of my life, actually. And I was so fearful. How can uh, what I, uh, what should I do with my sins, and how I am going to stand before Him? And there is a holiness before me, but then my life is full with uh, like uh, uh, all the black, all the wickedness, unrighteousness. Not that I committed any murder or not that I was drinking, not that I was doing something, uh, some kind of heinous crime. But then I, I can see my life in terms of that light, that, that holy and righteous light. And then uh, th those words I read from the scripture, those words were moving inside me. I was like, I was inside the ship where I used to live in my, in my defense worship. And th three days I did not go out also. And I was just eating and doing my duty and I was sleeping. And then my friends are saying, what happened to you? You have become so wide, so quiet and you are not talking and all. And something is moving inside me, in my mind. And those words I read from the, uh, from the scripture, he said that his words are saying that he is holy, he is pure. And the same thing, like that, that fish was moving inside the bag and I could sense those words are moving inside me. And I could see that there is a God actually and he is holy and he is pure and he... He demands righteousness. He is just and he, go, he is going to judge everything and everything. He, is, he, he wants to justify us. But I was not understanding how to center my life unless until the, one of my friends came to me and he said that, oh, you have to repent and you have to do this, those things. And then I did that and I came out of that. But then what was happening that time? I read some words from the uh, book of John actually uh, uh, is talking about his living water, his, he, all those things. And all those words are like moving inside me as if uh, like I'm, I'm getting up, I'm brushing my teeth. Those words are talking to me. He's moving inside, he's living word. And uh, words are living actually and powerful actually. And sh it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It pierces through our heart, soul and spirit, everything actually. And word of God is very powerful thing. So uh, it's a living active thing actually. Uh, the, the, the word actually, uh, sometimes we think that, oh, we are going to use that word against the enemy. Oh, that, that we can do actually. We are going to learn that. We, we can do that. But then word sometimes will cut us from inside. It will cut us actually. Who uh, Like you are going to use that word. You are going to uh, speak that word. But then word will cut you also. It is having two edge. It, both the side it will cut actually. So it will reach heart and it will, it will cut you from inside out also. Like cut means it will for the in good sense. And the word of God cut, painted every area of human personality. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. I remember like, uh, like sometime I sat with some local church leaders to share them gospel. You know, they could not sit with me till the, till the last point. <laughs> they moved out from there because they cannot, they cannot hear, they cannot listen anymore. Because uh, the word was penetrating their heart. Word will paint it us. It is a very powerful thing. It is not that how you represent it. Of course, we should represent it in the right way. But the Holy Spirit uh, will use the word to paint it their heart and mind. There are a lot of people who, uh, who sometimes tell, like, like, do you remember five years ago you came to our place and you preached this? 
I said, no, I don't remember because I, I forgot actually. So I said that I preached the same thing to others also. I said, that, that heart, uh, hit my heart so hard actually. I said, this is the word actually, it's not me. That word actually hit you. And uh, you should repent actually, you should turn towards God. And uh, word is both offensive and defensive. It will help you to protect from the words of the enemy. But at the same time, it will, it will, uh, it will, uh, it will, uh, it will cancel the work of the enemy. But the same time, it, it will cut your wrong understanding inside. It will cut your heart also. Like, uh, if you are not living in the right understanding, if, you are, if your life is not right according to the word of God, then the word will cut your heart also. So, it is uh, the, Holy Sp the Holy Spirit used actually the word in our life. And the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of God, that these are the powerful thing actually. And uh, in, uh, in, the, in the scripture, the word of God is a sword actually. It protects ourselves and it attacks the enemy. Both the thing it does actually. But sometimes people want to use it just to attack the enemy. Uh, uh, that is not right. It sh we should use it to, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, check ourselves also. It will protect us also. Uh, we need rigid training to use the word of God. It is not that, uh, you know, when the, when the soldiers, they, they use the uh, uh, sword, they need proper training to use it, actually. In the same way, we need to have proper training. We need to, have, uh, we need to read the word of God to the context, to understand it, uh, right context, so that we can use it in the right way, in the right place, with the right people, actually. Other than this, we may use it in the wrong way, in the wrong place, with the wrong people. So when you use it in the right way, in the right context, it will be useful. Actually, Holy Spirit will use that to touch people's heart and mind. Even it will help you to cleanse yourself. Like it will, it will cleanse you from inside, actually. It will, it will convict you, actually, from your wrongdoing, from your wrong understanding, from your sin, from your own wickedness. So that you will also repent and turn towards God. Right. Second Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be complete, complete thoroughly equipped for every good works. Not only for uh, preaching, but also will be complete and you will be equipped for every good works. That, that is what... Uh, the doctrine will do in us actually so we should allow the doctrine to do that in us it is not that we just heard the doctrine and we just forgot it we should allow the doctrine to sink in our uh, sink in our heart actually and we should do accordingly what the word says and uh, when you do that the word when the when the when we allow the word to work inside us then we will be will become complete then man of god will become complete we will grow up into his perfection and then we will be equipped also for good works. Good works means his work, what he already prepared for us in advance to do, uh, sharing gospel and all those things, even this helping others also. God will help us to do that. So, <coughs> so uh, since we all are in the spiritual battle, we need to know how to use the word uh, uh, properly. Uh, it, it can be defensive uh, to protect yourself from the enemy and also it can be offensive actually to uh, demolish the strongholds or error or falsehood in your mind. There, are, there can be a lot of false understanding in your mind and the uh, word of God will help you to, uh, to uh, damage those things. Also, it will protect you from uh, wrong understandings, wrong things uh, uh, to be spoken against you so that uh, you will not believe that. A lot of people come and tell me that, oh, enemy is telling me this. I said, what God is telling? Uh, then they'll say, we do not know. <laughs> then you sh I said, that is your problem. It is not that enemy is speaking. You should know what God is speaking. So when God, you know what God is speaking, you will not accept what an enemy is speaking. And then uh, when they start hearing from God, they start understanding what, how, to, uh, uh, how to believe the word of God, how to use the word of God. And then they say, that, okay, I can get rid of that because I'm using the word of God and enemy cannot speak actually. I cancel enemy's word. So we need to practically use enemies, uh, uh, God's word to demolish stronghold in our mind and also cancel uh, enemy's word actually. Uh, uh, Revelation chapter 116 says that he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. So Apostle John, he saw a vision of Jesus Christ in his glory and uh, his mouth um, went a sharp two-edged sword. That is the word of God, actually. Uh, Jesus Christ, he saw Jesus Christ. That is not the same Jesus who, who moved in the Galilee. 
but Jesus Christ in his glory actually. And uh, that, that he, from his mouth, that sharp two-edged sword is coming out. And that is the word of God. Now, Jesus Christ also used the word of God against the enemy. And when he was having fasting and all, and then enemy came to uh, torment him. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11, we can see that three times enemy came and enemy told him to do something. Enemy also told, enemy used the scripture actually to put him down, saying that, oh, you... Uh, you tell these stones to become bread and uh, he said that man shall not live by bread alone but the word of God then he said that okay you uh, uh, you should uh, then one place he said that you you uh, throw yourself from here and the God will protect you because there is a scripture he says that uh, God, God will not allow your foot to be uh, like uh, like you, you will not be hit by anything uh, there is a scripture in in the Psalms and the enemy knows that. enemy was using that scripture. And Jesus said that God told us not to uh, put him in, uh, to, not, to, not, to, uh, uh, not to put him in trial. Like, uh, so Jesus was actually putting it in the right context. Enemy was taking it out of context and he was trying to confuse him. Same thing enemy does in our life actually. And then enemy also told him that you worship me, I'll give you everything. Uh, Jesus said, that, no, 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 I'll worship the Lord and God, actually. And then enemy left, actually. So, uh, the enemy, will, enemy may use word of God, partial word of God. Uh, he may use it so that he can put us down. And sometimes we may think that, okay, he, this guy is talking from the word of God. That means he is believing in God. No, no, no. We need to check it, whether he is telling in the right context. So, enemy may use, use that. So, we need to know the right word, right understanding, actually. For that, we need to spend time with the word of God. We need to spend time with God actually. God will help us to understand that. And uh, enemy will try to uh, put us down. Enemy will try to put us on trials and he'll, uh, he'll, he'll do all those things. He will uh, use uh, word against us with the with wrong context so that he can put us down. Uh, So uh, here actually the word is used is Rema word. Uh, the Paul used the word Ephesians chapter 6, 17 is a Rema word. I think I shared with you guys when uh, we were sharing about how to hear from God. I shared one day about Logos and Rema. Logos is a written word in the scripture. Rema word is what you hear from God. God will tell you personally this is what is applicable to your right now, the situation you are going through. Uh, this is the solution of that. And of course God can give you that from the scripture and God will tell you in your heart and that is the Rema word actually and the Rema word will help you to withstand the things of the enemy also you can use the scripture uh, if you uh, if you memorize scripture you can uh, you uh, you meditate on the scripture uh, God will give you from that scripture also Rema word which will help you to withstand uh, the attacks of the enemy the, the wrong understanding of the enemy when enemy will try to attack you And uh, Holy Spirit will help us al also to withstand all those things. Uh, we need to use our uh, we need to use our faith also to withstand those things. Uh, we need to put our body. We need to protect our body uh, by the armors actually, and uh, we need to protect us from every side so that the enemy should not attack us. So uh, we can use uh, the sword of the spirit, and we can use all those armors like helmet of salvation, uh, 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 sword of the sp uh, sword of the word of God, uh, uh, the uh, shield of faith, uh, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, shoe preparation for the gospel. We need to put on all these things to withstand the attacks of the enemy. But uh, there is one place which actually is unprotected. That is our backside, our back. We should not show our back to the enemy. <laughs> like we should, uh, we should, uh, we should face him offensive. Not that, uh, like we should not show our back towards him. Uh, in certain sense, we uh, our back is like you know in 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 uh, army actually when you go for close fight and uh, our people who are from our side, people are from our team, they actually protect our back. How? Like if I'm going ahead to fight actually to fire. Those people will be protecting our, my back actually. So I will trust them that they will protect my back. They are from my own team. So, uh, but then if they are not protecting it, uh, then enemy can protect, uh, 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 enemy can attack me from the backside actually. In one sense actually, they are, if there are believers who are not uh, properly born of God and they are part of your group actually. 
and they can be a source of attack of enemy uh, uh, behind your back actually so our back is not protected and uh, enemy try to attack us from our back so we should not show our backside to the enemy in one sense we should always uh, have uh, uh, like we should uh, uh, we should have a offensive uh, uh, plan towards the enemy not defensive thing actually we should have we should have offensive plan towards the enemy and uh, we should be careful like with whom we are uh, in in christian faith there are some people some believers they are not properly born of god and they have a lot of wrong understanding and uh, they can be a source of uh, 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 like uh, enemy the they enemy may use them uh, against your life so you need to be very much discerning i am not telling this thing to uh, discourage you uh, or uh, keep doubting each other no not that but we need to be very careful uh, actually what you are doing and uh, and who are there with you actually um, other than this enemy may use them actually against you so we need to protect each others back we need to pray for each other sometime we know that some people are struggling or some people are doing something in the spirit and they are uh, in the ministry we pr- we pray for them and i believe you also do that actually uh, but then some people are in uh, in uh, kind of uh, like a spiritual fight with uh, like really spiritual fight with the uh, with the powers of darkness and then uh, we I, i know them and they sometime tell me like Uh, can you just pray for me i'm doing this thing and uh, give, and help uh, pray for me so that god will give me wisdom and also pray for me so that i'll be protected so okay i'll i'll do that i'll uh, i'll do that i'll pray for that person but we need to be very careful with whom we are actually sometimes people who are in our group they might not be properly born of god and they can be source of uh, attack from the enemy it happened with me actually i was part of a church 12 years ago and there was a division in the church there are two different pastors one is senior pastor and junior pastor they are fighting in between and uh, i was not knowing that what is the fight in between but then i found they have no proper doctrine actually they do not believe in right doctrine they are uh, just like fighting two different teams one sunday one group is teach, uh, preaching other sunday other group is preaching and it literally like they are preaching f- each other they, they are preparing gospel, preparing message for the other group other group is preparing message for this group and that is going on in the church for some some time then i was started i started preaching about false teaching when i did that they become together and they started uh, fighting against me and then i thought someone is with me but that guy was not born of god and he was a, he was junior pastor actually and then finally he become source of attack for the enemy actually and he spread a lot of lie about me to others and then uh, god told me that just move out from that group and then i'm not i'm not in them i'm not working in them just you go out from this place i do not want you to be here but by the time that person spread lot of lies about me in that group and then uh, uh, like one way like as i was preaching there for some time uh, the, my reputation and everything gone <laughs> then i also understood that it's not god's will actually to stay there so i moved out from that place so uh, just a example actually we need to be protected from our back also people whom you think that they are close to you in faith and uh, they should not be people like they are doing something behind your back it should not be like that they should be prayerful people who are helping you out actually so you need to be careful actually uh, who with whom you are right um so we I'll, should um i want to touch on this after the group's over yeah so also we need to we should not be defensive if you are a defensive christian so enemy will always try to damage you if you are defensive christian we should not be doing defensive if you know uh, soccer like for example soccer or any game you play actually group, group game uh, you cannot play defensive and you cannot win the win the thing you have to play offensive in the same way in the kingdom of god it, it is not that you are praying for your family and you pr- you are praying for your children and you are praying for your job and amen thank you lord you are praying you are living defensive life you are just protecting yourself that is not the way you can withstand it you have to be offensive you should go out you should share gospel you should do uh, things uh, uh, against the kingdom of god kingdom of god is advancing in everywhere actually and you need to pray you need to pray for the things what is happening in the city uh, what is happening in the country you should be offensive and when you are offensive uh, then you can like you can break the power of the enemy not only in your family but also around actually we need to be offensive not defensive defensive means he is like powerless he is just like trying to protect his own family his faith is, faith is very less actually so we need to advance against the uh, against the enemy 
Uh, Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 says that I say to you that uh, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not be uh, prevail against it. Now in the proper Greek actually uh, the Peter, the word Peter is, uh, understand, Peter is a rock but then in the Greek there are two kinds of rock actually. One is small rock and is a big rock. Peter means small rock. So if I, uh, if I translate it in, in proper Greek it will be like this. That I say to you, uh, I say to you that you are small rock, like Peter means small rock, and on this, this is big rock, big rock, big rock. I, I will build my church. So uh, Catholics have a problem with this word. They say that oh, P on Peter he is building the church. No, 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 no. Peter was small rock, and the rock, this rock he is mentioned is the big rock, and that is actually big, big rocks on which people is to build their house and all. So he said that on this rock I'll build my house. The rock is uh, he himself actually, his foundational understanding. And he built his church on that. And the gates of Hades, gates of Hades shall not prevail it. Means the enemy's gate actually will not prevail it. You know what? Enemy will try to, uh, try to come and attack the king, uh, gates of uh, kingdom of God. The, who are there? People who already believed in Jesus. Enemy will always try to attack them so that he can bring some people out from there. I know a lot of brothers and sisters who are born of God, but then they are living in discouragement. Some of them, they left their faith, or some of them, they are living in a horrible condition, actually. They do not believe in God. They are in, uh, like, horrible con condition. Their mind is almost gone, actually. Their mind is al almost gone mad and all. So they uh, gone through a lot of enemies attacked and they allowed that thing to happen. They did not protect themselves. They did not walk in the right understanding of God. So we should not enemy allow the enemy to attack us in, in terms of we should attack the gates of Hades. We should attack the gates of Hades regularly and we should bring people out from there. So uh, we, need to, we need to attack them with the, with the right understanding of the gospel, putting on the right armor of God. We need to go and bring people out from that place. We need to attack the kingdom of uh, darkness actually. Unless we do that, the enemy will always do that against us. Enemy knows our, our potential. Enemy knows that who is there inside you. Enemy knows it very well. And uh, that's why enemy will try to put doubts in your mind so that you will be uh, you'll not be uh, uh, using uh, like you will not be uh, walking in the truth you will not be understanding what god has given you uh, to do actually so you live in doubts and uh, um, like you live in ungodliness and fear shame guilt all these things colossian chapter 2:15 says having disarmed principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them tramping over them uh, in it. So Jesus already triumphed over them and through Jesus we can also triumph over them, triumph over all the power of uh, Satan actually. And the God, uh, Jesus already disarmed the principalities and powers. The principalities and powers which are working against us, working against the society, working against the people, Satan's kingdom, uh, they, they are already disarmed. And God has, God, Jesus Christ is already triumphed, he is already victorious. And we are also victorious with him. And we should know that, that we are not victim, we are victor actually. And in that understanding, we should, we should uh, hit back against the enemy actually. 2 Corinthians chapter 2.14 says that now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us uh, diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every places. He always, God always leads us in triumph. Always we are in triumph, always in victory. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 19, that's why he says that all authority is given to me in heaven and earth, given to Jesus. Therefore, go and make disciples to all nations. Who? Who will go? You will go. Why? The authority belongs to Jesus. And because the authority belongs to Jesus, that's why the authority belongs to you also. Because you have Jesus. So when you have Jesus, the authority is having you. You are also having the same authority as Jesus is having. So with the authority of Jesus, you can go and do uh, all these things. We can bring out the king people from the kingdom of darkness. And you can uh, disciple them. And you can teach them, train them. And you can prepare them. So, so <coughs> all authority and heaven and earth given to Jesus Christ. And that is given to us also. We need to exercise those authority. Uh, we, need to, we need to exercise that authority. We cannot just live with our own understanding, own mindset actually. We should walk in the victory that God has given us. The victory Jesus won on the cross. He disarmed the principalities and power. We are part of that actually. And we are, we are part of that victory. And he has given us that victory. He won the victory on our behalf. And he has given that victory to us. So we need to walk in that victory every single day. 
So that was what I wanted to share. John, you want to share something? 